What are the best indoor plant tools to help you take care of your plants? Here is my roundup of the 10 best indoor plant care tools or gardening tools that you may not know that you need. I have some items on this list that you may not have thought to own, so stick around and find out. Hey, it's Nora the Lekker Queen. Taking care of plants can be very fulfilling, but also frustrating, especially if you're a beginner plant parent and don't have the necessary tools that you need to appropriately take care of your plants. Because remember, a person is only as good as their tools. There are lots of options when it comes to picking plant care tools. Let's look at 10 items that I find indispensable when taking care of my plants. And make sure that you stick around to the end because I'm gonna show you something that I I've got in my toolkit that makes sure that my propagations survive and thrive. Sir, thrive every time. Let's get started. Number one item on my list is a moisture meter. This little gadget lets you know whether your plant is dry or wet. The dial moves depending on whether the soil is wet or dry. And that lets you know that it's time to water or it's not yet time to water. This little gadget is the savior of many a plant parent that either overwaters their plant or underwaters their plant. It's very easy to use. You just push the device deep into the soil of your plant and it will let you know if the soil is moist or dry. Remember to always deeply water your plants, which brings us to item number two, the humble watering can. You need to use a well-designed watering can. What do I mean by this? The outlet of the spout should be connected to the base of the watering can and the high handle makes it easy for you to pour. Having a watering can with a large capacity like this one, this one is 1.9 liters, makes it easier for you so you don't have to keep filling it up all the time. This one here is a little watering can. It's got a capacity of one liter. It is just so beautiful. It's so pretty. It would make for a lovely present for the plant lover in your life, but it's only one liter. It's a bit annoying. Maybe if you don't have too many plants, it was work, this would work very well. But see how the outlet of the spout is also at the base of the can, and it's got a lovely high handle, making this a really great functional watering can. The very slim spout also allows for very accurate watering. You're getting your water where you want it every time. And while you're watching, make sure to let me know in the comments below what plant care tools you're using, what you find indispensable. It's always nice to know what other people are using and you can always pick up a few tips and tricks. If you prefer bottom watering your plants, item number three will make your life a breeze. The humble tray. A simple tray is what you need. Put your plants on the tray, add your water or nutrient solution, walk away and come back later when your plants have had their fill. After your plants have had a drink, they may need some grooming. And this is where item number four comes in. Garden shears or pruning shears, call them whatever you want, a pair of scissors, Every plant owner needs one of these. You can use a pair of scissors to cut off yellowing leaves, prune your plants, or cut your plants in readiness for propagation. Propagation is a great way of getting many more plants and I'll give you some tips and tricks about propagation when we get to items six and 10. You can use any odd pair of scissors, right? But you can get specialist shears like this one. And this one has tipped blades that ensures that you make a precise cut ensuring that you only cut what you intend to cut. It also causes less damage to your plant's stem because you're making a sharp, precise cut. Item number five is very important, especially if you've got many plants and you want to remember their names. Plant labels, absolutely essential. You can get a simple tag, you write the name on that and that'll do, or you can get a bit more technical and get an actual label maker and label your plants that way. I have over 60 Hoyas and I can never remember all their names, especially because a lot of them do look alike. So having these little labels is an absolute lifesaver for me. So I, I choose to go the old school route and I just write my plant name on that little label and I stick it in my plant and away I go. And then I know exactly what each plant is called and I don't have to struggle to remember all their names. I love propagating and coming in at number six are vessels to use for propagating. And one thing that you need when you're propagating is jugs, jars, lunch boxes, 
anything that's going to contain your medium and your cutting to allow that propagation magic to happen. This is one of my favorite propagation jars. It's the famous egg from Kmart and it's got in here some of my little alocasia babies. So I was propagating these alocasias in chunky perlite and I'm, I think it's safe to say that that's gone really, really well. I probably need to move these little babies out of this for now, but this, this, this device is cheap, readily available and works really well to contain that humidity and my cuttings are doing fabulously. Having said that, your propagation vessel does not need to be high tech at all. You can use anything. This is an empty jam jar. I use empty yogurt pots. This is a take a little takeaway lunch box. I've got some anthuriums propagating in there. So you can use anything and I bet you if you ask any plant parent who's been collecting plants for a while they've got heaps and heaps of containers it's really hard to recycle something because every time I see an empty container I want to keep it but I've got so many I can't keep anymore so propagation vessels definitely are your friend make sure to keep some if you don't really like the jam jar look and you want them to look extra special, you can get little things like this. I think I got this from Ikea. It's just a lovely looking vase item and you can put your cutting in there and it looks pretty, you know? I really like that one. I've got this one here. It's a little terrarium bowl and I got this on sale at Bunnings actually. It was on, I think it was on clearance. I found it and I thought, oh, this looks fantastic. That'll make a great propagation jar. And I've just covered that with cling film just to increase the humidity in there. And I've got my little alocasia freedic growing in there, my variegated alocasia green velvet. And it sprouted after just a few days. So that has gone really well. Propagation vessels are really your friend. And if you're enjoying this video, if you're finding value from it, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Listen to me very carefully. Item number seven is absolutely essential. Plants need light to grow. And most plants need more light than you think they do. And that's where this item comes in. Grow lights. Grow lights are no longer just something growers of a certain herb use in their homes. They're not as expensive as they used to be and are quite easily accessible. You can go upmarket with lights like this sexy Mother Life plant spectrum, or you can get a grow bulb like these Soltec fitter bulbs and simply place them in a lamp you may have lying around in your house that suits your decor. Whatever it is you choose to use, as long as you're providing additional lighting, your plants and your cuttings will grow bigger, faster and healthier and they will thrive. This is item number eight, a spray bottle. Mine is a one liter spray bottle and in this spray bottle, I have what I like to call my pest deterrent. I get my plants like this alocasia dragon scale here and I've got my pest deterrent mixture in here and I spray this plant at least once a week, front and back until my plant is nicely dripping and it looks nice and wet. And what this mixture does is it helps keep those pesky pests away. This mixture contains water, castile soap, neem oil and some peppermint essential oil and this works really well to keep pests away. I've got another special item in my toolkit that helps with pest control that I'm going to show you right at the end of this video as a bonus tip. Stay tuned. I grow my plants in Lekka and I make my own net pots. This is a net pot, just a fancy term for a nursery pot that has a lot of ventilation holes. I love to use pots that are clear and have lots of holes and so I can't find ones like this to buy so I make this myself from just normal nursery pots and I use my trusty soldering iron to make those holes. Of course I do it safely with a mask in a well ventilated area far far away from my children just to be safe but this soldering iron allows me to make these holes in my nursery pots and in so many other things that I need to make holes in. It is absolutely essential for me and if you're using semi-hydro, 
you might need to grab one too. It'll save you a lot of time. The final item on my list today is what I promised you earlier. This is going to propel your propagations to the stratosphere. It almost guarantees that your propagations will succeed. And that is a heat mat. This will be a game changer when you're propagating or you're moving your plants from soil to lecker. I put my cuttings or corms or propagations to sit on this heat mat. They get nice and toasty and before too long, the corms have sprouted or the roots are visible. Get yourself one of these, you will not regret it. Having said all that, the best plant tools are the ones that you can find readily available, work within your budget and work in your space. Now here's that bonus tool that I promised you, a magnifying glass. Yes, a magnifying glass. I use this magnifying glass for pest detection. Yes, we're going inspect a gadget on all those pests. If I suspect that a plant might have pests and I'm not really too sure, I grab my magnifying glass and I put those leaves literally under the magnifying glass and see whether there are any pests there. And if, and if there are any pesky pests on that plant, I can fix them up before they become a problem. By no means is this an exhaustive list, but the items listed here will help you take care of your precious plants and will make that care so much easier. Please like and subscribe if you found value from this video. Watch this next video where I discuss the tools that you might need if you're growing your plants in semi-hydroponics. I'll see you there.